Welcome to the Zizzo Effect Podcast, your go-to for all things gamified. Today, we're stepping back from our usual focus to look at something big, how we manage our teams and workplaces. Is it time for a new approach? We've seen what gamification can do. Now it's time to ask why it's shaking up the old ways of managing work. We're going to compare traditional management styles with new gamified strategies to see how we can make work better for everyone. Get ready, it's game time. Hello and welcome to the Zizzo Effect podcast. My name is Andrew J. Rymers, and I am by far the tallest person in my family. Wow. Yeah, I'm I'm Jimmy Shabbat, co-host of the Zizzo Effect podcast. And I used to be the tallest in my family up until my son Chase decided to grow to over six foot two inches tall. He's a tall kid. And uh, fun fact, the more you sleep, the more you grow. And he sleeps a lot. So it kind of gives the answer as to why he's so tall. As you hopefully know by now, or maybe for those of you just tuning in for the first time, we like to kick off each episode with a game. Yes. And yeah. that game is called Name, Name the, the game. game. So we have some wonderful producers backstage, Emma and Alex. And the way this works, they're going to play a song from a video game. Now, we've been keeping track right now, the record. We both are tied at one, one, and one. <laughs> so fresh game. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the one who takes the lead. So. This is going to be for the lead. And just to show where we are, uh, we want to thank you for all the support because now, thanks to you at home and thanks to you listening and watching, uh, we were able to get buzzers to uh, add to the experience. This is just for yeah, us. And have... then the audience at home will have a chance to play, the play round. round two. Yeah, but feel free to participate in this one as well if you guys can guess the song prior before we do. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. We're, we're going to do it hand on the table. Hand on the table. Okay. We're ready to go. Interesting. It's a slow starting one. Go ahead. Halo? Is it Halo? It's Halo. It's Halo. It's Halo. Wow. wow. Okay. That, I, I've that never, brings I've never me back. So game. I don't know if he listens, but Jason Lamar, my cousin, that brings me back to the gaming days in our apartment. Holy smokes. <laughs> I've wow. never played the game, so that's why I'm unfamiliar with okay. it. Okay. But I know it's a very popular one. It is. Yeah. So yeah. That's, congratulations. Uh, you now have the lead. Wow. Good job. Thank you Good so job. much. Unexpectedly. I know who would have thought sitting around getting high and watching my <laughs> cousin play video games would pay off down the road in 2024. But here we are. If you guys are at home smoking weed, playing video games, there is a future for you. <laughs> According to uh, Andrew. Here. So th <laughs> yeah. There's benefits. <laughs> All right. Well, that is uh, that is round one. But now we have to give a chance for our audience to play as well. And I know Alex, Emma have another song ready mm -hmm. and you can chime in on any of our socials, whether it be on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, or, or uh, wherever you get your podcasts. That's right. Yes. And don't so. forget to check out our website, www.playzizzo.com. Got it right this time. Good job. Hey, I appreciate nice. that. Nice. Why don't so, you share the prize first, right? It's, it's something new. We've given away a couple of hats. Now we're, I mean, it's more apparel, more attire. So but this one's unique. It's the opposite side of the body here. Go ahead and uh, introduce <laughs> it. <laughs> it is not your head, but for your feet. <laughs> opposite side of the body. <laughs> you know what? I, I didn't have I, any way to explain it. Listen, you're, you're, yeah. you're right, but you're also wrong. Okay. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Our audience at home has a chance to win some brand new socks. These 100% cotton, one size fit most socks go with almost nothing in your wardrobe. And they can make up new ones pretty easily as well. Let's go to round two of Name, Name the, the Game. Game. 
This one is unfamiliar to me. Oh, I know it. You know it? I do. Okay. Yep, yep. I uh, So I can tell you a little story about this. Uh, speaking of family, it's funny how both songs have brought up memories of family, but I have siblings that are uh, significantly younger than I am, uh, 10 years, 11 years, 14 year difference. And, you know, they grew up also gaming, but they were gaming on N64. They were gaming on GameCube. Uh, they were playing games that I would watch that were maybe a little young for me, for my interests at that time. But this game, I think we're going to get a lot of right answers because we had, uh, I remember they had a lot of fun playing that game. I know it was very popular. Yeah. It's, you know, those are two of the platforms that I didn't really get into. Mm -hmm. I, w I was definitely a Nintendo. I did do the N64, but I think that's where my Nintendo, uh, history kind of ended. I went from that. I think we, I don't know where Sega Genesis, the Sega, then the Sega Genesis, but then we went to PlayStation and Xbox. And, you know, from there, I never went back to Nintendo. Yeah. But they had the GameCube. They had the, what's the, the Wii, Wii, Wii yeah. U. Now they yeah. have the Switch. The Switch, uh, yeah. Which we have a, one of those at home that I really yeah. enjoy. Uh, nice. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, that, uh, yep. let's uh, let our audience know again. They can uh, post in the comments uh, on any of our socials uh, if they want, wherever they get their uh, podcasts, and we will pick from the correct answers, and we'll have a drawing and see who can win these fantastic 80% cotton socks. <laughs> nice that we've got the, uh, the percentages correct. Don't want to lie. Nope. <laughs> Don't want right. to lie. All right, Jimmy, but... Let's get to why we're here. As always, yes. we love to have fun at the beginning, uh, but we also want to talk business and let's turn our attention to the workplace. So, you know, let's start with from your experience, from what you've seen. Um, what are some of the outdated management tools that you've encountered and that we've encountered, uh, you know, in some of our research uh, with businesses nowadays? Yeah. And, and you know, you, you'll hear me say this a lot to a lot of our customers, our prospects and people that we talk to regarding gamification and, and really how it's modernizing workforce management. Right. So modernizing something means that what's currently happening is become outdated. And, you know, it's not just tools, but it's just kind of the, the way to look at work nine to five work days. Right. You know, those are almost a thing of the past, especially with the latest trends of people working from home, you know, due to COVID and, you know, now even post COVID it's hybrid. It's hard to bring everybody back to the office. So, you know, you may wake up in the morning, take your kids to school, you know, come back home, make yourself something to eat, get, get on your computer and your work, they may go all the way right before you go to bed even. So no more nine to five, you know, annual reviews. Um, that's something that's happening, happening more frequently or even less frequently. You know, the review process, I think, is, is requiring more feedback. I think the younger generation or the newer workforce uh, wants to know how they're doing and how they can improve. Uh, micromanagement. I, I think micromanagement was something that, you know, was physically done with somebody literally looking over your shoulder, making sure that you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing. Um, that that's been outdated for a while. People don't love to be micromanaged. However, there are tools out there, including Zizzo, that give you a lot of information where people are starting to kind of micro, not necessarily manage, but at least analyze their own work and their own work output. Quietly micromanaging. Yeah. Behind yeah. the scenes micromanaging, but not so much over your shoulder in your face. Exactly. I, I think there's enough data in this world now that you can really get pretty granular with yeah. some of the information. And, and what you do with that information, I think, is going to be the important part of the modernization efforts. Yeah. You know, you're, at, you're right. And we are going to uh, get deeper into that, you know, and with all these outdated practices that we've seen uh, still in play in some of the research that we've done, you know, what... I guess my question for you then, Jimmy, is what's driving the push for modernization? Yeah, I, I think there's some very new challenges, right, that are occurring in this in this world, in this modern workforce, in this modern workplace. We've touched upon, you know, some of the reasons for attrition um, in the past episodes. Uh, we talked about the younger generation, Gen Z, entering the workforce. We talked about the new workplace, we just touched on, on it right now, it's people are working from home. It's a new new era in kind of like the, the human psychology. Um, people, I think, want to, to be engaged. And, you know, that's one of the biggest challenges you hear is not only is it about attrition and performance, 
but it really com- kind of boils down to maybe engagement, right? And I think that's one of the things that we have touched upon. And, you know, we went out and did some research, right? We've, we've done a ton of research, but we really wanted to touch base with individuals and businesses uh, here locally. And I know that you've talked to several people. I did. I was uh, thankfully able to use my network. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's great to look at some of the conversations I was able to have because they were with people that I've done some pretty sketchy stuff with over the years. But, you know, it's it'd be rock and roll lifestyle and all that, you know, and now we're talking sales. Now we're talking, you know, restaurant industry. And uh, but uh, let's start with sales. I, I spoke with a friend of mine uh, who is uh, in the sales department there. And a lot of the unique challenges uh, he talked about is everything you were just saying with the hybrid work environment. Mm-hmm. It's hard because people figured out that they can still work from home. And like you you mentioned, can work on their own schedule. They can work around what they need to be done. However, it creates organizational sort of that it's hard to have a culture. It's hard to be feel like you're a part of a team. And that's something where it maintaining the team cohesion is nearly impossible. Yeah. In the setting there. And, you know, and going back to, you know, when I had a call center and you were part of that culture, um, we would quite literally and physically move desks around as well as people to manage what we would call energy, right? Because there are certain people that may conflict with one another and you want to separate them and there's certain people that you want to leverage their talents and their skill sets and put them next to maybe some newbies and help them learn just by almost osmosis right hearing and listening to what the other person is saying and then uh you would hope they become kind of mentor protege relationship but you know or two people that are just overly talkative and not productive at all that you'd have to separate uh, but y- you don't have that anymore right everybody is on an island Right. And how do you communicate? Right. And so you had talked to um, your colleague in in this space and it's a it's a pretty big technical firm. This is a global company. It is. Yeah. Um, You know, and again, unique challenges. Uh, You said the word communication and that was something and this isn't the first time it's going to be brought up, nor is it the last time it's going to be brought up. The younger workforce, Gen Z, younger millennials and the need to adapt your communication with a new workforce. Um, There's different expectations around what they want from their job. They, you say it all the time, they, they want to be communicated with, but they don't want to be talked to. Uh, That's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's just different than what our generation, you know, was used to growing up. Um, But modernization efforts uh, that were going on in this department as well, uh, just in terms of even um, the CRM that they use and uh, workday for, you know, time, attendance, uh, performance, things of that nature. But they are starting to get in the gamification world. They just need a little bit help to get there. They he used the example they give out tickets to go see Drake. Like and it was a big competition that went on. It was a month long competition and it, it made people excited. It made people engage, you know, and that's fine for the short term. You know, that's that's okay. Um there was a recognition system, a reward system that they're starting to put the pieces together. You could tell and you could tell the excitement around that. And I swear I could have sat and talked to him for three hours about like, well, here's where you go next, you know, but we didn't have that kind of time. And we're going to dive a little deeper into, I think, our next episode, the do's and don'ts of of gamification. But yeah, there is inherent um, cultures or that there are certain cultures that are inherently gamified, right? So sales is a big one. There's a lot of competition inherently with individuals. Everybody wants to be the best. Some of them think they're the best. And there's usually competitions that are put in place to help promote, you know, uh, performance and productivity. And at the same time, trying to create that healthy competition doesn't always work that way. But Mm -hmm. again, we will get into that later. But uh, I know that those are some of the things that the sales team was doing. What about restaurants? Yep. I reached out to another friend of mine who, who owns a local restaurant here in Buffalo. And Uh, The number one thing he said, again, it was the communication adjustments. Now, he's also our age and uh, this is his first time as an owner. And he you know, you talk about your uh, sort of rude awakening you had when you got into the call center space. 
uh, in the culture shock that you experienced. And he experienced that as well. And that involved, again, switching communication styles with the younger employees who prefer texting over talking. Now, like when I was younger and my boss called me, you know, my first instinct was, oh, shit. <laughs> what yeah. did I do? Uh, yeah. What voice am I putting on? Yeah. Is it the <laughs> but <laughs> the next thing I did was pick up the phone and go, hello. Yeah. How's it going? You know, I, nowadays you can't get people on the phone. So you yeah. have to adjust your ways of, of communicating. Um, you know, the restaurant industry is interesting because we talk a lot about incentivizing people. Um, they work for tips. So yeah. it is you, you can't just necessarily create competitions. You know, you could, but you can still take elements of gamification. Like they have a leaderboard that they put in. So they keep track of who's actually the top uh, server. They know exactly who's at the bottom too. Uh, yeah. You know, all that transparency, the things that, that were around even when you created eWhiteboard. Um, and I remember experiencing that knowing, uh, you know, that that made a big difference that you want to be on top of that leaderboard. Um, and then finding new ways to engage the employees and help build that culture. Now, Listen, he had some outside of the box ideas. I'm not saying that I necessarily condone or agree with them, but, you know, they offer when you're done with your shift, you get two free drinks and that's nice. to stick around, hang out with your work family, get to know them a little bit more. Uh, and what that does is drive because drives more business, because when you have that culture, you know, and that's what really where his focus was, those people that are staying for the two drinks are saying to their friends, hey, I'm over but why don't you come meet me here? And then it becomes a party. Yeah. Um, they also have a weed drawer that people <laughs> are encouraged to uh, participate. If it's going to help keep them calm, help keep them cool, help keep them engaged at their job, uh, they're allowed to take the occasional smoke break and it's provided by the restaurant, which I thought was interesting. Just a quick note, uh, recreational marijuana is legal in New oh, York yeah. State. So yeah. where nobody's doing anything illegal. No, but. No. But in, in cultivating a, a supportive culture, building camaraderie, I mean, I think that's an important part of almost every business, right? Making people feel like they, they have a sense of belonging, you know, a sense of family and, and unity. And, and in some environments, it's easy to do, easier to do than in others. Restaurants, when you're combining, you know, uh, you know, alcohol and maybe some, some Mary Jane, you know, you're going to get a little bit more open and free and people are a little bit happier in that, in that setting. Um, but when you go to an orthodontics office, it's very yes. specialized, right? There's different functions there that go from sales to customer support and, you know, manufacturing, but, manufacturing. Yeah. You know, that's a very different environment. I don't think you can offer weed in that environment. No, you can't. Yeah. It doesn't work there. And, uh, I was able to speak with one of their owners, nice. uh, at ODL, uh, Tom Wright, who, um, again, you know, I'm not going to beat, uh, this dead horse here. Communication with the younger generation was at the top of his list of unique challenges, you mm -hmm. know, and he took a very nuanced approach to communicating with those younger people and developing relationships with them on from an owner to a frontline worker level and making sure that he had the interpersonal relationships and he gets to know them and, he, you know, to get them invested, to get them engaged with the company. Um, one uh, point that he brought up that I found really interesting because it's something I could relate to was he addressed burnout. Um, now, there's different reasons for burnout. There's different causes. Um, I can tell you that I've felt burnt out with jobs in the past where it was just it wasn't that the job itself was a negative setting, but the job I was doing uh, was very negative. You know, it was a call center. And uh, after a couple of years, I just couldn't do it anymore. And I, I, I had to get out. And, um, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily always have to be due to overwork. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can just be the nice person in the office that everybody loves to come to to vent about the, all their own problems and that can cause burnout you know yeah. and just keeping your pulse on the culture on the the emotions of your staff um you know and then really again in that repetitive work trying to maintain engagement like keeping a frontline workers you know at odl they have wire benders for braces and it's still you do it by hand you have to have great dexterity you have to take a test uh, in order to even qualify to like get this job, it's very, very specific what you have to do. And how do you keep people motivated? How do you keep them, you know, excited? Well, they started to implement an incentive program where they were able to get a certain amount of appliances done in X amount of time and they got another little reward and they got a bonus. 
Yeah, that um, I think that's an important part. And, you know, we talk about feedback loops, right? I, I think going back to your point about the, the emotional component, I think we're very hyper aware of mental health and, you know, mental awareness and making sure that our people are mentally healthy, right? And that work isn't contributing negatively yeah. to that. And I think that's that's one of the unique challenges that we have today. And another reason for modernizing, right? In the past, nobody really cared how you felt. Right. right. They didn't care what you were going through personally. They didn't care what was happening at home. Just leave that at the door and then come in here and do your job and then don't take your work home with you either. Just, you know, some people want you to take the work home, but, yeah. um, you know, our, our organization always was, you know, hey, you leave work at the door, go enjoy your family yeah. uh, and your life. Um, but, you know, going through all three of those, you know, the challenges seem to be all very much related. It's a new generation, a new form of communication, uh, being aware of mental health and, and burnout, uh, maintaining engagement. Right? I think that's the common thread is uh, how do we engage our staff? You know, the restaurant owner provided kind of a, a social setting, you know, for them to feel comfortable to be themselves and enjoy life and have a, have a drink or two. Uh, amongst other things, uh, you know, ODL, you talked about the owner personally getting to know each and every one of his staff members. That's a different form of gamification. That's personalization, right? Him making them feel like there's a sense of community and they have a purpose and, and a place. Yeah. In, 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 I, I would even argue not making them feel like there is, but showing them that there is. Yes. Yeah. I. You have to, it can't be just marketing material up on no. a, a posterized on all over. You have to actually do you know, the, the culture building, but it goes beyond that, you know, some of the incentive programs, you know, the recognition, the rewards, that's where I think a lot of people are, are taking an effort to provide, you know, a form of recognition and rewards. And that ties back into our main subject of yeah, gamification. It, it absolutely does. And through our research and through our conversations, you know, one thing was clear, it was the leaders in all these organizations know that change is necessary, but they're obviously still in the process of trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. My question then for you would be, is there a single real answer to their problems? Well, I think I said it just a moment ago that the common thread is engagement. Now, uh, whether or not there's a single solution to that is still yet to be seen. Um, you know, it, engagement seems to be the buzzword, but, you know, if you want to kind of break it down and, and, you know, answer the question, what is engagement, right? Mm -hmm. So so there is a definition, there's a technical definition that I think is fairly comprehensive. And um, it's essentially employee engagement is the strength of the mental and emotional connection employees feel toward the organization that they work for their team, and their work. Uh, it's about how emotionally invested employees are in their work and the organization's goals. That's the definition. Yeah, makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, now, I I like to simplify it, and I think that it's a way to retain and care for their job, retain attention and so that they care for their job. And it goes beyond um, just the emotional investment, right? I mm. think that there's a starting point there. I think the things that a lot of people do nowadays is could be a, a, a starting point and a way in, uh, but it, it goes beyond just that. Yeah, no, it, it is. But engagement is so important. And, you know, I thought it would be kind of fun to go through uh, and just to inform our audience a little bit um, about some of the creative ways companies are trying to boost engagement amongst their employees. Um and I'd like to talk about a few of those sure. and then maybe get into why they might be, I don't know, more of a short term fix. Yep. Um, let's start with team lunches. Yeah. Uh, again, it, we very similar to your restaurant owner friend is having drinks, right? It's building a community, having people come together and get to know each other, right? Break bread together is one of the best ways to get to know each other. But what winds up happening? clicks for them. It's almost like a high school cafeteria, right? Depending on the size of the group. I mean, it could be smaller, it's more intimate, but if you've got a large group, people start to break off and create clicks. And that's something that we try to avoid in our, in our call center. But, um, Friday happy hour is another one, right? It's, it's another form of, Hey, loosen up, 
uh, let your hair down and, and go. Now, there's some, sometimes that could be a liability, right? If you got that one person that goes a little bit too far with drinking, but it's also a liability. It brings me back standpoint. to a baseball game in 2011 that you treated us to. Yeah. And I, I somehow woke up on uh, Danny Gabray's floor uh, <laughs> the next morning, but I digress. <laughs> Yeah, there were some fun parties that we had and, you know, you have to balance it out, right? You got to, again, the liability of you don't want people drinking and driving, uh, you know, office parties are the same thing. You you don't want people embarrassing themselves. It'd be hard to come back to work after that. Uh, but, you know, snacks and coffee in the office, flexible work hours. There was a trend uh, that people, and it, again, this is a way to attract talent and to get them in the door so they can want to come and work for you, but unlimited PTO. You heard about this one? No. <laughs> yeah. And, and look, I think the intent is is good. I think what they were trying to say is, is look here, we know that, you know, life work, we'll call it balance, uh, is important to most people. Um, and they say, we trust you. Yeah, but it, it's an honor system, you it know. Is, like yeah. it, 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 I don't think it lasted very. Yeah, long. I don't think so. No, and, and part of the reason is, you know, you'd get some people that would take full advantage of it, and would argue that it's unlimited PTO. Why would you offer that if it's truly, if it's not truly unlimited? And you have some people that are just, you know, they they've got the, they care about their work, they care about their jobs, and when they see other. Uh, colleagues not coming to work because of this, then they start taking advantage of it and productivity overall starts to go down. So, um, but there, there's a lot of other, as you mentioned, short term solutions to try to build engagement. And I put that in air quotes, but it's not, it's not a, a full scale solution. No, you're, you're right. And I love the way you put it where there's certain things that people do to try to drive engagement that maybe, like you said, attract people and get them in the door. Mm -hmm. But what can we actually do to truly engage the workforce long term? Yeah, well, I mean, we already hear whispers of it in management tactics from my research to you and the things that you talked about. But trends like real time feedback, uh, rewards and recognition, um, all of the elements that you just mentioned in there are all elements of gamification. But gamification has to be done right. right? It can also be done wrong. Shocker to our audience at home. Uh, gamification is going to be the answer to all your problems. Yeah. Uh, what is the name of our podcast again? Oh, the Zizzo Effect podcast. Oh, what is the uh, tagline? <laughs> it's all things game, game time. And it is game time. So, <laughs> so gamification appears to be our answer. Yes. But you said if done correctly. Yeah. It's. It, I mean, this is going to be uh, a pretty long episode we can dive into so many different ways where it's right and wrong and I, I don't you know I'll tease it here but um, there's it could go wrong pretty quickly and it could be counterproductive and um, so I'm excited to share a lot of that in our next episode me too can't wait and so we close out today's episode having journeyed from the well-worn paths of traditional management to the uncharted territories of gamification it's a new beginning for workplace management and engagement. Next week, we're lining up the crucial do's and don'ts of gamification. It's the actionable insight you've been looking for to successfully navigate this new landscape. Ready to gamify your workplace or just want to learn more? You're in the right place. Playing the game is just the beginning. Mastering it is where we're headed. Get ready. It's game time.